So again, thanks for, for joining me this afternoon as we do a, a quick overview of the Blue Barn and Member Center uh, volunteer orientation. Uh, for those of you that just signed up this afternoon, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I realize that the volunteer, or pardon me, the webinar, webinar sign up may have been uh, a little bit difficult to find originally. So luckily we're recording this for everyone who can't join us this afternoon and we'll make sure everybody gets a copy. So the agenda uh, for today's presentation is, uh, number one, we'll talk about credential pickup. I know there was a little bit of a hiccup with that last year, so we'll we'll talk about how that'll go uh, for AirVenture 2019. We'll review the ground access pre-convention uh, that is in its second year now to kind of restrict some of the, the ground access. Number three, volunteer expectations and what we hope to, to see out of you guys. Uh, number four, a day in the life of a volunteer, depending on what shift you have. We'll talk again about the member center layout, which is very similar to last year. And then we'll look at the blue barn as well as some of the go-to personnel here on EAA staff, and then open it up to you guys for uh, any Q&A. So credential pickup again will be at the will call window, which is located uh, just outside the main gate. It's one of the buildings just to the north of the main gate. I'll have a map view here in just a second. Uh, that building will open on Saturday, Saturday, July 20th. Uh, when you arrive, please provide your name and that you're a Blue Barn volunteer, and they should have your envelope with all of your needed information. Again, I know last year there was a bit of a, a hiccup with how some of that was uh, stored and located in within that building, so we'll do a better job this year of making sure that uh, everything's in a neat, neat fashion and easy for you guys to pick up. Uh, when you're navigating your way to that building, it is located right there uh, outside of the admission gate. There is a sign just on the outside of the building that says, we'll call. Uh, again, this view here, uh, uh, our maps here in Oshkosh are oriented a little bit differently. They're more oriented to the convention grounds. So uh, up in this picture would actually be east. Uh, the flight line would be at the, the top portion of this. Uh, map here and then if you look in the upper left hand corner you can actually see right where the blue barn is. Uh, so if you do come through that admission gate at any point you can go ahead and follow that uh, James Ray Boulevard uh, just to the left and that'll take you right to the blue barn. Now the uh, grounds will have a little bit of restricted access again this year leading up to uh, opening day of AirVenture. Uh, the pre-convention ground access rules uh, are going to be in effect from July 18th through the 21st. Uh, the restricted areas uh, are mainly in place to help keep folks away from our exhibitors, uh, in the exhibit hangars, the outdoor exhibits, just because there's a lot of moving parts still. And, you know, we're we're a very unique event where before the event is even officially started, we have tens of thousands of people arriving by car and aircraft and you know people want to get in and watch aircraft arrive so uh, just trying to make sure the exhibitors have a chance to get their stuff set up and make sure uh, we're keeping all of our guests as safe as possible. To access these areas uh, you must have a lanyard that has a little uh, credential hanging off the bottom of it you may have seen them last year. Uh, in addition coming through the gates during that time frame I know in years past people were able to sneak in with bikes or scooters uh, we're going to be cracking down on making sure that uh, individuals with personal transportation devices like bikes and carts and uh, mopeds and those sorts of things uh, are unable to get into the grounds. So again, here's an overview of the areas that will be restricted. Uh, as you can see, it is essentially everywhere except exhibit hangar A. I uh, won't be able to get into that exhibit hangar, but that area won't be uh, a part of the restricted zone. Uh, if you do arrive early and you're looking to watch arrivals or you want to kind of meander uh, through the unrestricted areas of the grounds, uh, this will be your best access point. The admission gate located on the uh, south end of the exhibit hangars, uh, just uh, across from Paul's Woods. Uh, once you come through this gate, you'll see uh, Vern Avenue, which is the, the road that you come in on there that runs uh, east and west. You can uh, walk along Vern Road, and once you come up to Knapp Street near the Theater in the Woods intersection, 
Uh, you're more than welcome to take Knapp Street all the way up to the Blue Barn if that's where you're headed, or take Vern all the way up to the flight line. Uh, again, Knapp Street is not included in that restricted area, uh, although it does split the two restricted areas in half. So should have no issues coming through that gate and taking Vern to Knapp Street or Vern up to, to Whitman Road up towards the Vintage Red Barn there. So expectations for the Blue Barn slash Member Center volunteers. Uh, continuing off of a theme that we started last year, I know we have a, a ton of volunteers that work with us that have been uh, traditionally Young Eagle volunteers working very closely with uh, Michelle and Brian. And, and as I'm sure many of you know, Michelle actually recently retired. Uh, so the Young Eagles uh, folks now consist of uh, Brian Olina and Chris Gauger for the time being. Uh, and then, of course, we still have our traditional chapter staff uh, between uh, myself, John Egan, and Serena Camps, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, but in addition to us, we do have a couple chairmen, uh, technically both co-chairmen, co uh, Ted Kirkpatrick, who is uh, what I'll call our, our building go-to. Uh, Ted's great uh, for showing up early and helping us with uh, anything we need done around the building, helping fix things up, put things together, build things. Uh, pointing people in the right direction uh, really helps get things done. Uh, our other co-chair, Mark Kolasar, uh, he's been emailing back and forth with some of the volunteers. Uh, Mark will be uh, more in charge of the scheduling side of things and volunteer uh, fulfillment hours. Uh, he's going to help us stuff some of the packets for credential pickup. Uh, so those are the two individuals uh, who you can consider as your go-to uh, volunteers throughout the week and leading up to your venture with any questions that you might have. Uh, as far as what you'll be doing uh, in your role, we know all of you guys are chapters and Young Eagles people. Uh, and of course, we don't expect you to be an expert on every single topic. We just want you to be able to discuss some of the programs and happenings within EAA at a high level overview. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish today is give you guys an idea for some of the things going on. Uh, as far as programming goes and resources and uh, new things for the Young Eagles program that are coming out. Um, and again, just be able to talk about that at a high level. Uh, and feel free to always point those people with questions to, to an EAA staffer or, you know, we'll have printed collateral around the building you can give out as well. We're asking that the volunteers don't congregate just at one desk and start having a conversation. Uh, similar to last year, we'll have multiple uh, workbench kiosks located throughout the building. Uh, and we'll have, you know, one to two people at each of those kiosks. Uh, but again, don't feel like you're, you know, you're glued to that kiosk and that chair. Uh, if it's a little slow and you see people, you're more than welcome to roam the building, chat with people, and, uh, you know, just interact with the, the folks that are coming and going from the buildings. If someone asks, asks you a question and you don't know the answer, feel free to say, you know, I'm just not sure, but let me find someone who might know. Uh, and that's when you can try to find one of us in a, a blue polo uh, or tether mark and uh, hopefully get the, the answer they're looking for. Uh, if not, we'll have business cards laying around the blue barn as well. And you can always say, hey, here's, uh, you know, John Egan's contact information. You can shoot him an email, uh, but he should be back to the blue barn later today. Uh, again, as volunteers within the Young Eagles program and the EAA chapter network, uh, you guys are subject matter experts. Uh, talk about your experiences and your expertise and uh, what you've done with your local programs and what you have found successful and uh, maybe what didn't work. Uh, because again, there's there's no better, uh, you know, there's no better way to, to talk about some of the issues facing chapters than to talk with someone who's faced those exact same issues. And, uh, you know, a lot of the visitor, visitors will probably resonate with some of the experiences you guys have been through. So a day in the life of a volunteer. Uh, as you guys know, you signed up through our new online sign-up tool, Sign Up Genius, uh, for either a morning or afternoon shift. Uh, we ask that you arrive about 15 minutes prior to your shift. So for the morning shift, uh, 8.15, uh, the building doesn't technically open until... Uh, nine o'clock. So we'll kind of, you know, take our time, get the building all all set to go and open the doors and start helping people as they come in. Uh, your shift in the morning ends at 1230. Uh, at that point, we'll have meals on hand for the morning shift, uh, sandwiches and cookies and 
whatever, whatever fruit they decide to throw in the, the lunch bags that day. Uh, and throughout the week, we'll have refreshments uh, in the back office, uh, the volunteer break room, water, Gatorade. Uh, in the morning, we'll have coffee back there. And I'm sure throughout the week, uh, folks will bring in different treats for the volunteers, whether it's cookies or donuts or whatever it might be. Uh, the afternoon shift, again, we're asking you guys to arrive at 12.15. Uh, please try to make sure you eat lunch before you arrive. Uh, there is always a chance that there might be a couple leftover meals from the morning shift, but that's never a guarantee. And uh, we want to make sure all of our morning volunteers eat first. So we do ask that you don't uh, go, don't go digging around looking for a lunch unless, uh, unless a staffer or one of the co-chairs offers uh, a meal to you. Again, uh, check in and see where you'll be assigned for that day, uh, what desk area, and uh, go ahead and start your shift at 12.30 and then uh, be done at 4.30 for the, uh, for the day. So first, we're going to talk about the uh, member center layout. Uh, the picture below is uh, a little bit outdated from how the, the facility will be set up. Uh, but it'll be very similar to the, the last couple of years uh, with, you know, main membership desk, some retail items. Uh, and then we will have this year, oh, before I get there, I guess, here's, uh, here's where the member center will be located uh, on the grounds right at that main corner of Aviation Way and uh, Knapp Street there on the northeast corner. Uh, the layout for the building uh, will be very similar to last year. Uh, however, uh, if you were there last year, you may have noticed that there was uh, two separate uh, desks, one for Young Eagles and then another for Chapters. Uh, this year, that desk has all been uh, put into one. So we'll have a minimum of two volunteers down there at any given time, all at the same desk. Uh, down here, you'll be discussing, again, things at a very high level, uh, even compared to the Blue Barn. A lot of these people you'll interact with might be looking for a local chapter. They might have a question about Young Eagle flights for their kids, uh, which you can direct them to the you know the EAA website to find a flight near them, or if they're from the local area, point them to Pioneer Airport here at the museum. If they have very chapter or Young Eagle specific questions as a you know chapter leader or Young Eagle volunteer, you can go ahead and direct them to the Blue Barn. Uh, we'll also have a Blue Barn form schedule available for you to hand out so you know if they have a question on running a young eagles rally you can pull out the form schedule and say hey it looks like uh there's a forum on running a young eagles rally coming up later today um, as far as helping them find a local chapter if it's someone that wants to join a chapter in their area we'll have a, a large find a chapter screen with the ability to print off uh various screenshots uh in years past this has been a touch screen but we realize that was a a little bit more of a hassle than it was worth. So this year is just a standard computer connected to the large screen. So it'll be very easy to manipulate for you guys. So now we'll talk about the uh, Blue Barn. Pardon my uh, Microsoft Paint uh, overview of the barn here. Uh, the barn in this picture is uh, oriented with north uh, up on this picture. So east being the, the large door on the right hand side, which uh, is considered the main entrance. Uh, as you can see, uh, forum area is still in the back as it always has been along with the two break rooms. Uh, the break room in the far back is the volunteer break room uh, where we'll have the lunches, uh, the refreshments throughout the week, uh, Gatorade, water, all those sorts of things. And then the, um, the second office, which is uh, the one closest to the main floor, uh, there will be some different meetings going on in there throughout the week, and we'll talk about those later in the presentation. So this year we have split the barn into three main themes for uh, chapter members. Uh, those themes are grow local participation uh, in aviation, and anything that pertains to growing local participation will be uh, de uh, denoted by the uh, a blue sign or a blue banner. Uh, or blue design, uh, make it easier to be a, a Young Eagle volunteer uh, and a chapter member. Uh, these signs will be color-coded green. And then uh, we also are highlighting developing chapter leadership. And these signs are more in an, an orangish red or orange tint, uh, which again, you'll see 
uh, brought into the design of the various signs and stuff throughout the building. So now we'll uh, take a quick overview of the Blue Barn and what is included under each of these areas uh, this year. Again, it's uh, relatively similar to years past, but uh, as always, there are some changes that uh, we'll discuss. So the first area is here in the uh, northeast corner. That's our chapter resource area. Uh, we're planning to have six handouts again uh, on the various topics that you'll find on the chapter uh, resource webpage. So if someone has a question about a specific resource, they're most likely to find it on these handouts. So these will be uh, easily accessible for you to grab and hand out to people if they're looking for them. Uh, you're more than welcome to take them and uh, page through them just to become more familiar with the resources. Uh, if people are looking for any sort of chapter resource, it's going to be at eaa.org slash chapter resources. Uh, in addition, we had some uh, giveaway pens last year, and the plan is to have those again this year for, for members to take. Now we'll uh, transition over to the roster management portion. So the roster management uh, is a new tool for EAA chapters. Uh, it's a tool designed for chapters to manage their membership roster. Uh, we will have a computer on hand so folks can demo and play with the software. You'll see uh, it'll just be on a little kiosk located uh, very near that, that corner of the building. Uh, included in this free tool uh, is the ability, like I said, to manage your roster, uh, put in all your members, their contact information, uh, their mailing address, their EAA number, uh, their join date for your chapter, those sorts of things. If they're you know, paid up on their dues, uh, you'll have the ability to create membership directories. So if each year you want to print off a little uh, book to have in the chapter hanger for members to have so they know which members to contact for certain questions, you can create that with this tool. Uh, you can do easy email polls for mass emails that you're going to send out uh, to help you prospect members. So you can put interested folks into this tool and tag them as uh, prospects. Uh, view membership trends so you know, you know, hey, last year we had 100 members, this year we have 90. What happened to those 10 that didn't renew? Uh, track EAA uh, member numbers. And then there's also some custom fields for tracking things like, are they a Young Eagle pilot? Uh, what sort of aircraft do they have? Are they a pilot at all? And uh, it's a very, very comprehensive software. So we will have a forum uh, towards the middle of the week. So uh, if you're interested in attending that, definitely check that out. Uh, we'll have the forum schedule uh, available for everybody here uh, very soon. As a matter of fact, I believe it's already on our website. Moving over to the next wall area is our chapter recognition uh, portion. So the chapter recognition is a, a new chapter program designed to recognize highly engaged and active chapters. So this has been uh, something we've been working on for a, a little while here. Uh, and the program takes into account 10 different criteria uh, that chapters will be scored on uh, each November, December timeframe. And these 10 criteria are listed right here on the right-hand side. Uh, we'll also have uh, that displayed on the wall. And then we'll also have a handout uh, explaining the program. So we'll include that in your uh, binders that will be located throughout the barn as well. So you have uh, some better detail on that. Uh, but this is definitely one of the, I would say, probably more in-depth and sensitive uh, programs that we've worked on. So with this one, uh, you know, do not be afraid to approach uh, any of us in the in the blue polos to see uh, how we can help the conversation you're having with uh, with a member. We're also going to be talking chapter tool cribs again this year. As you know, last year that was uh, one of the main themes of the barn with uh, chapter build in there and then various tools uh, scattered around highlighting the the opportunity for chapters to have tool cribs. So uh, this year uh, we're going to be announcing a new program for chapters to take advantage of that will help them seed their tool crib. So there will be a list of specific tools uh, that are considered kind of specialty tools for uh, what a chapter would need in their tool crib, things like aircraft scales or, uh, you know, prop balancers or whatever it might be. 
that chapters can purchase and uh, be reimbursed uh, for 30% up to $300. So pretty cool program. Uh, again, that one's kind of in its infancy, so uh, not a ton out there yet, but eventually chapters will be able to request these funds on our website. Uh, in addition, we'll also be giving away a Lincoln TIG welder again this year. Uh, luckily, the process for uh, handing out that TIG welder at the end of the week will be much simpler than last year. You might remember last year we had a little snafu with uh, the uh, entry tickets that were kind of misprinted. So this year it's going to just be blank tickets that you write your information on and drop it in the bucket. And there will be no restriction on if a chapter answers today, can they answer tomorrow? Yep, that's not a problem. Um, obviously, they can't be filling out five tickets at once. Uh, but multiple entries will be uh, will be allowed this year because we figured, uh, you know what, that'll get them to come back to the Blue Barn more times than once. And uh, that's the whole goal is to get people down to the Blue Barn and get them talking with, uh, with our volunteers and get them to sit in on a forum. So again, you'll see that... Uh, uh, those tickets in that drop bucket located uh, over in that portion of the of the barn. Located in the same spot as the last couple of years is the EAA uh, chapter map. And this is the area where members will be able to come in and uh, pin their windsock on the, on the map. We'll have a little shelf this year coming off the wall with uh, the pins and the markers so people can pin their spot, take a picture in front of the map to, to show that they were here at Oshkosh, and uh, should hopefully be very, uh, very self-explanatory. Uh, the one thing we do ask is keep an eye on the wind socks that'll be uh, sitting out for folks to, to take and ride on. If they start to get low, we'll have some stocked probably uh, under one of the benches or in the back office. And if you see it's getting low, go ahead and uh, if you know where they're at, put some more out. Uh, otherwise, you can ask someone if they know where they're at, and we'll we'll find them and get them pulled out, so uh, people can keep filling out their their pins. We'll now transition over to the southeast side of the building, and this is the portion of the building where we'll be talking about flying clubs. Uh, this area will be very identical to last year; a lot of the same information. Uh, you know, we'll be talking about that uh, there's a new initiative to help chapter members form flying clubs, but the flying clubs have to be separate legal entities. Uh, we'll have some handouts over here, uh, formation checklists stuffed in the uh, front cover of some notebooks. Uh, again, these are for people to take. Uh, you don't have to, to hide them from people. Go ahead, lay them out, and as people come through, they can grab them. Uh, no harm in that whatsoever. We'll also have a flying club FAQ handout. And then we're also planning to have a limited number of the Flying Club uh, manual hard copies on hand for people who express a very serious interest in forming a Flying Club. Uh, when I say limited number, we're talking maybe 25 to maybe 50 copies on hand. So those ones you'll want to guard a little bit more and only hand out if someone has a you know a real extreme interest in forming a club. Uh, we'll also have a, a resource handout which. Uh, let's everyone know what some of the Flying Club resources are that exist. Uh, again, whether it's sample documents, the Flying Club manual, uh, club budget tools, uh, benefits, and things like that, uh, everyone can find those at eaa.org slash flying clubs. So that'll be the, the main call to action in that area. Located just adjacent to the Flying Club uh, setup is going to be our Flying Start and Eagle Flight area. Uh, this location is going to utilize the large C-47 doors as it has in the past. Uh, the goal of this area is, uh, is to educate chapters on the initiative uh, for this new program that helps chapters engage with the local community and introduce new individuals to aviation. Uh, we had our first EAA Learn to Fly Day on May 18th, which encouraged EAA chapters to host a Flying Start event. Uh, if you are a, a little unfamiliar with the Flying Start program, it's a program hosted by the local chapter at their airport. Uh, they give a short presentation on what it's like to learn to fly, what people can expect, and really just break down the barriers. Uh, this is intended to be kind of the the welcome mat for people who have always had an interest in learning to fly but have never taken that first step. Uh, that presentation is provided by EAA along with a whole host of marketing materials. 
following the presentation, again, we're, we'll highlight flight training options and how you can join the local chapter. Uh, participants are taken on an Eagle flight. So over in this area, we'll have a video loop uh, on a TV located just inside the C-47 doors of different chapters hosting these events and kind of hear what the, the chapter leaders and the participants of the event have to say. Uh, again, we'll have some forums highlighting the program throughout the week. So uh, be sure to check out that forum schedule and let people know that uh, that'll be one of the best times to come learn about what that program has to offer. Next to that is going to be the Ray Aviation Scholarship Program. Uh, this is a EAA's newest scholarship program, which is ran through the EAA Chapter Network. Uh, it is worth uh, about a million dollars annually in flight training scholarships. Uh, and because the funds are limited to just a million dollars, uh, chapters do have to apply to participate. So this year we were able to approve uh, right off the bat about 90 chapters, although we do have some chapters on the wait list. Uh, each scholarship is worth uh, up to $10,000 per individual and participants within the program are eligible for a free Lightspeed Zulu 3 headset. Uh, the funding for the scholarship isn't all at once. It happens on three separate increments. Uh, there's an initial funding of 40%. Uh, there's funding following the scholars for solo of 40%, and then the final 20% funded upon completion of the FAA written. Uh, one of the main questions uh, we'll probably get over the, the week of Oshkosh is, uh, how can my chapter become you know, a better candidate to administer a race scholar? So we actually have a handout created for chapters to help them improve their uh, selection chances. And we'll also have some forums highlighting the program uh, throughout the week. Over in the back corner, just in front of the forum area, is where we'll have the Young Eagles set up this year. Uh, the Young Eagles area will highlight how to volunteer as a Young Eagles pilot. You know, what are my pilot requirements? Uh, you know, you have to be an EAA member, have your passenger liability, uh, be current, uh, all of the things that come into play when uh, becoming a Young Eagle pilot. Uh, we'll discuss the Young Eagle flight plan, you know, starting with the Young Eagles flight and then the student membership, the Sporties Learn to Fly course, the first flight lesson, uh, and on to scholarships. In addition to that, we'll also be highlighting the new Young Eagles Day online registration. Uh, luckily, we'll have a computer on hand uh, for people to demo the, the product. Uh, this, it'll be the same computer as the roster management demo station, so it'll kind of be a, a dual purpose kiosk. Um, so people can jump on there and see how to register an event, how to register a kid, how to you know register a pilot, those sorts of things, run an event. And luckily Don White, the uh, creator of the program, will be in Oshkosh to uh, host some forums during the week to help walk people through the ins and outs of the program. Uh, again, we'll have a, a small little kiosk on the IMC and VMC Club program. Nothing major here, uh, just some pamphlets to, to hand out. Uh, the main location for the IMC VMC Clubs is actually going to be over at the Pilot Proficiency Center and the Member Center. But we want people to understand that, you know, as a chapter, uh, you can adopt these programs. Um, so again, uh, if you're familiar with the programs, you know it's really a program designed around organized hangar flying that uses real world scenarios uh, to help uh, you know, groups of, of members discuss how they would handle various situations and uh, you know, help us all become safer pilots. Uh, EAA provides all of the presentation materials and the program does qualify for FAA WINGS credits. Again, uh, we will have some forums on this program as well throughout the week. Now transitioning to the uh, back corner over here, the Virtual Flight Academy section. Uh, if you have not heard of Virtual Flight Academy, it is a flight simulator program uh, available to all EA members, but uh, in this building, we'll obviously be, just be discussing how chapters can take advantage of the program. Uh, what it is, is it's a software that's compatible with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, that incorporates a, literally a virtual flight instructor that walks you through various maneuvers, whether that be, um, you know, maneuvering an aircraft in steep turns or uh, landing an aircraft, taking off, flying the pattern, 
uh, and there are quite a few scenarios out there which are completely free for the chapters to use. Uh, so we'll actually have the, a flight sim set up with Virtual Flight Academy uh, on it uh, for folks to come demo the system. As volunteers, highly encourage you to come uh, demo the system so you become a little bit more familiar with it and you feel comfortable talking uh, about what it's like to fly it. And we'll also be having some giveaways for this as well. We'll be giving away some various uh, flight sim uh, controllers throughout the week. Uh, there will be daily drawings uh, to help chapters uh, potentially seed their, their own little flight simulator setup. Uh, as you can see by the photo there, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can have a little laptop with a joystick, or you can get as fancy as you want and have a, you know, a, a bigger screen TV with some uh, rudder pedals and the yoke in front of you and everything. So uh, we'll actually have a, a separate volunteer on hand manning this station uh, for the most part. So uh, luckily, you won't have to be too involved with this, but we might just put an extra volunteer over with that individual uh, to maybe help with, you know, lining people up if they're interested to use the software so the other individual can kind of talk on behalf of the program. In the center of the barn this year, we have the Young Eagle Build and Fly program. This is another brand new program that's being rolled out this year by EAA for chapters. And this is a program that's completely based around uh, an RC model program. Uh, this booth will also be staffed by separate volunteers throughout the week who are building an RC model. Uh, so again, luckily there will be a lot of people there to answer questions, but uh, as a volunteer, you may get asked some of these questions as well. So here's what you need to know about the program. Uh, it's designed to help answer the what's next uh, for Young Eagle participants. Many times a Young Eagle takes a flight and uh, immediately they say, I loved it, but what do I get to do now? And for those that are, you know, 10, 11, 12, even 13 or 14 years old, it's not really time yet to start taking flight lessons. You're still a little bit too young, unless of course you wanted to get into soaring if that's available near you. Uh, but this program offers those individuals to get hands-on with uh, RC model building. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you that are into aviation now at one point or another probably had some models and RC models that you built and played with. Uh, so it, we just feel like it's a really great connection between, again, modeling and, and what the modeling community calls full-scale flying. So uh, chapters will work with local AMA clubs on this program, and the program does include a kit that is available for purchase for $500. Uh, however, this kit typically retails over $1,500, so it's available at a significant discount to EAA chapters. And this kit includes any and everything that you will need uh, to have a, a good RC program at your chapter. It includes a, a SIG LT40, which is a, I don't know the exact dimensions on it, but it's a larger uh, RC model aircraft that uh, this is the one that will be being built within the Blue Barn throughout the week. A uh, small Vapor RC, which is a very small kind of indoor, very slow flying RC aircraft. Uh, all of the tools, materials, glue, everything, uh, literally everything you need to build this airplane is included in this kit. So it's uh, quite literally a, a, an RC model program in a box. Uh, and it'll also include Real Flight 8, which is an RC simulator software and uh, control. So before you go out to the local AMA flying field, the, the chapter and some of the youth members uh, can start flying the simulator and become familiar with what it's like to, to fly an airplane that you don't have the first person view. You know, I'm sure we've all uh, been there at some point or another, but flying an RC airplane when it's coming at you, uh, you know, you kind of got to think about which way do I move the joystick to go left or right, up and down. Uh, so that's what the simulator is there to, to help uh, prepare you for. Uh, we will have that simulator set up uh, near that center pit so attendees can come and try out uh, you know, their skills with the RC simulator. And uh, as I said throughout the week, that SIG LT40 uh, will be being constructed. And then we will fly it over at Pioneer uh, one of the evenings when the, that RC field is open for flight operations. Now, towards the back of the building, we'll have our traditional forum area. Uh, we have forums every single day except the final Sunday. We'll have a forum schedule back on the wall there that you can direct people towards. And then we'll also have a couple stand-up signs uh, outside uh, in front of the Blue Barn 
Uh, all the forms follow the standard EAA form schedule, so they'll fit perfectly into people's schedules who want to go, uh, you know, listen to Bud Anderson talk about his experience, and then go visit a fabric covering workshop, and then swing by the Blue Barn to learn about, uh, you know, youth day camps and things like that. So uh, that's the forum area back there. Uh, many of these forums are going to be hosted by staff members as well as chapter members because, again, uh, we firmly believe that the uh, subject matter experts really are those chapter members that are out in the field, uh, the boots on the ground that are making things happen, uh, that have, you know, probably the best experience to share with our, our attendees. Uh, Again, for this year, we'll have Patty Arthur on hand handling uh, some tax consultation meetings. She'll be on site Monday through Friday. She'll also have a number of forms that she's doing. So if anyone comes up to you looking for their chapter tax consultation meeting, uh, you can send them towards that office and direct them towards Patty. Here's a picture of Patty right here. Uh, you can let them know that she's in that meeting room, knock on the door, make sure she's not, uh, you know, assisting any other chapters and uh, she's extremely friendly, very helpful, and uh, if you do run into any issues, uh, you can't find Patty or there's a chapter that has questions about will she be around at different times, uh, you can either find me, snag me in the Blue Barn, or you can always give me a call if I'm not in the Blue Barn right at that moment uh, at my cell phone number, which is listed uh, right below there. As far as our go-to staff members, uh, here are some individuals that you can find in the Blue Barn throughout the week to help uh, answer some more specific questions. Uh, the Young Eagles and Eagle Flight Program uh, will be Brian Olina and Chris Gauger. Uh, chapters will be John Egan, myself, and Serena Camps. Uh, Flying Start will be John and Serena Camps. Uh, Flying Clubs will be me. Uh, the Young Eagles Build and Fly Program, John Egan will be the go-to there. Uh, I'll be the go-to for the Ray Aviation Scholarship Program. And then we'll also have uh, John Evans from our risk management team who handles all of the chapter insurance requests uh, with us in the building throughout the week. So uh, ho hopefully we get to introduce a lot of you to John because I'm sure you'll be interacting with him at some point or another, whether it's for a fly-in or a pancake breakfast, Young Eagles Rally, whatever it is. So he'll be there to, to talk to chapters about some of their insurance questions. Uh, and like I said, any concerns that come up with the forums area, uh, you're welcome to contact me. So now I'll go ahead and open it up for a, a short Q&A. Uh, if you do have a question, uh, you can go ahead and type it into your, your text box and send it in. And I will uh, try to answer anything as well as I can. Like I said, I know this was the 10,000 foot view of what's going on this year, but I'm sure sure you guys might have some questions, so go ahead and fire away. And also, if you have questions that don't necessarily pertain directly uh, for the Blue Barn or the Member Center, it's more of a, an Oshkosh-specific question, happy to try to answer that uh, for you at this time as well. So Ted says, I'll be on site tomorrow if you have anything you wish to talk to me about. Uh, Ted, sounds good. I'm sure we have some some projects that are, I know we've called you about a few, but I'm sure we can uh, figure out a few, uh, a few things there. Uh, Ira says, there was no mention of EAA paying for the FAA written exam in the Young Eagles flight plan. Has that been dropped? Uh, nope, Ira, that is still part of the flight plan. Um, uh, for those uh, former Young Eagles that do pass their FAA written, uh, they are still eligible to receive uh, reimbursement for that by submitting uh, proof of completion of that. Uh, and I think we'll have that included in some of the uh, hard, you know, hard collateral and handouts that we'll have within the Blue Barn. And we'll also have the volunteer binders like we have in years past with hopefully some more in-depth information. So you can uh, flip through those while you're eating lunch or sitting at your your kiosk or if someone has a question to, to help, you know, dive a little bit deeper into those things. All right, if there's any other questions. See here. 
trying to think if there's anything else uh, pertinent for, for you guys to know at this time. Uh, I don't think so necessarily pertaining to the, the Blue Barn. Oh, here's another question. Uh, for the RC program, does that include the RC transmitter? Uh, also, will AMA membership be provided to the EA members who are working with the program? Uh, the RC program will include the RC transmitter. Uh, that will be included in that kit. Uh, as for AMA membership, Ira, that is a great question. I am unsure if that will be uh, included for members who are working with the program, but I will take that down as a uh, to-do item, and I will uh, be sure to check with uh, our team who is leading that, but that is a, a great question. Uh, obviously, our student members get uh, AMA benefits, but uh, have not been made aware of uh, any adult member benefits. Uh, those of you who will be on the grounds leading up to convention, uh, specifically uh, starting Saturday, uh, each morning over at the Camp Scholler uh, Chapters Pavilion, um, there will be a pancake breakfast each morning starting Saturday, July 20th, running through uh, the final Saturday of the show. Uh, those breakfasts, I think, are $8, and they include pancake, sausage, coffee, orange juice, and uh, all of the uh, profits made at those breakfasts will go directly to the hosting chapter. Uh, chapters were selected via lottery system this year. Uh, and in addition to that, there is a uh, all chapter leaders um, corn roast on Sunday evening at the Camp Schuller Chapters Pavilion. So uh, you're more than welcome to, to join us for that event as well. Uh, another question came through, with the member center being open on Sunday, will volunteers be needed to man that position? Uh, great question, Ira. At this time, uh, we don't anticipate having to dig into our uh, volunteer pool too much on Sunday. Um, there's still a couple things being finalized for uh, how that building will be set up this year. So we're going to be working mainly with some of the, the member center leads to see if they'd like us to provide volunteers for that area or if they feel like they have enough coverage, uh, but great question. Well, all right. If uh, if there are no other questions, I would uh, uh, be happy to take any emails or phone calls from you guys if you think of something uh, coming up in the near future. Uh, hopefully, you all have my email by now. Um, oh, one other question here from Gary. At the Member Center, do we sell merchandise? Nope, Gary, you won't be in charge of uh, any merchandise sales. Uh, the only thing the uh, member center volunteers will be doing is, uh, again, discussing chapters in Young Eagles at a uh, at a high level and helping people find their way down to the Blue Barn if uh, if need be. So, nope, no merchandise sales there. Um, like I said, if you guys come up with any other questions, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. Uh, you can always send Brian or John or Serena, uh, any of us, uh, an email message. Uh, Mark or Ted, uh, we'd all be happy to to work with you and help get you get you figured out. Uh, as soon as we get this video buttoned up here, I'll go ahead and set a recording out to all of our uh, all of our volunteers. And again, at that point, feel free to to reach back out with any questions. And uh, thanks again for joining us this afternoon and taking some time out of your uh, Thursday uh, lunch break, probably. And uh, looking forward to seeing you all in just uh, oh, a little over three weeks now. So safe travels to Oshkosh, and we'll see you all soon.